Turn with me tonight, please, to the Old Testament book of Jonah. The Old Testament book of Jonah. The Old Testament book of Jonah. I want to draw your attention to just a few thoughts tonight. I just really over the last couple of days, I have just been drawn to this and and I think that there's probably some folks in this house tonight that need it as well as I do and uh, those possibly listening by live stream. Uh, we pray that this word will be a blessing unto you. Been in prayer about the Lord giving me another series on Wednesday nights and I do feel like that God has directed me towards a series of teaching and preaching, uh, but he's just not quite released me to do it yet, and so I'm waiting on his time. And how many of you know you can have something good, but without God's time, and it's not right? Amen? And so for those of you that are, that are maybe asking the Lord for something, uh, you can't force it. You've got to wait on God's timing. God will give you a vision, but you got to wait on God's timing. You can have something good, but if it's the wrong timing, it's not right. So Jonah chapter number one is where I do believe God led me to tonight over the last couple of days praying for the service. I am uh, I'm convinced, and this is not my message tonight, but I am convinced that we can get in such a routine of doing church and having church that we forget the God of the church. Amen. I, I, it's just a natural thing that happens. We don't mean for it to happen. It just happens. And we get into a routine of this is what we do and this is what we do. And then we check the box and we go home. I believe that God is ready in these last days just to pour his spirit out and for churches across this land to be led of the spirit and not so much a system of a service if you will does that make sense so is it okay if we're just led of the holy spirit here <laughs> yeah i'm glad because we are amen <laughs> jonah chapter number one now the word of the lord came unto jonah the son of amittai saying arise go to nineveh that great city and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me but Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Think about that for just a moment. Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish to try to get away from the presence of God. <laughs> you cannot outrun the presence of the Lord. And he went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea. In other words, they, everything that they had on there, they were trying to lighten the boat. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What are you doing down here, you old sleeper? <laughs> That's what he said. You old sleeper, what you doing down here? Rise, call upon your God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, Everyone to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots that we may know for the, uh, whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. They knew Jonah it was because of Jonah running before, running from the presence of God, not being obedient to what God told him to do. Then said unto them, let me just give you a side note. Your obedience just doesn't, disobedience just doesn't affect you. It affects other people as well. My disobedience just doesn't affect Brother Bill. It affects other people as well. Then said they unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? Where'd you come from? What is your country and what people are you from? And he said unto them, I'm a Hebrew and I fear the Lord. <coughs> Means he had reverence for God, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, 
Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because Jonah had told them. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. In other words, it was getting pretty serious now. And he said unto them, Take me up, cast me forth into the sea, throw me overboard. So shall the sea be calm unto you, for I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wrought was tempted. Temp 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 yeah, that word. It was rough. <laughs> it was rough against them. I find this interesting also. They knew that it was because of Jonah's disobedience, and Jonah said, just throw me overboard. But these men that understood that Jonah was being disobedient, they tried to row out of it instead of throwing the man that caused it overboard. They had compassion on Jonah. They didn't want to throw him in the, in the sea. Sometimes this world can have more compassion on us than fellow Christians. Amen? They didn't want to do it. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, Lord, hast done it as it pleased thee. They understood that God was within his rights and within his authority to bring this on them because of Jonah's disobedience. And they tried to row and get out of it and save Jonah's life. But it came to a place where they said, Okay, now we got to get rid of it. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I want to talk to us tonight for just a few moments on the subject, why we need a Nineveh in our life. Why we need a Nineveh in our lives. Every one of us need a Nineveh. We need an assignment that's harder than what we can do. Every one of us. Why we need a Nineveh in our lives. Father, help me teach and preach tonight, I pray, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. <coughs> Forgive my coughing. It's just, I'm just coughing. <laughs> Jonah was a man that God used as a prophet during the Babylonian captivity. God's nation, the nation of Israel, was taken into captivity for 70 years. Jonah was used prophetically of God. And his ministry occurred shortly after that of Elisha, the prophet Elisha, and overlapped that of Amos and was followed by that of Hosea. So God used a, a, a number of prophets in that time that the nation of Israel was held captive by the Babylonian Empire. And all of their messages was for repentance, it was for the wickedness to stop, and it was for God's will to be done in the nation of Israel and other countries as well. And so Jonah was given an assignment by God, and this assignment included several different aspects. But the greatest of these aspects was that of obedience to carry out the assignment. No matter the assignment that God gives us, you and I, as children of God, as born-again believers, we are to carry that assignment out, whether we like it or not, whether it's hard or not, whether it's difficult or not, whether we run up against obstacles or not. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. And so sometimes God gives us assignments that are much harder than what you and I can do. In fact, friend, let me say this to us. Every assignment that pertains to the kingdom of God is harder for me and you to, is, is too hard for you and I to do on our own. That's why we need the helper of the Holy Ghost. Amen? We can't do God's kingdom work without the helper of the Holy Spirit. Can't be done. It was the city of Nineveh that was in the country of Assyria that God called Jonah to go and preach repentance to. This was not an easy task. This was a hard task from God. He gave Jonah an assignment. He gave him a Nineveh. He gave him an assignment that he could not complete on his own. 
God knew that before he ever talked to Jonah and said, I want you to go to Nineveh and I want you to preach repentance unto this nation that is ungodly and the people that are ungodly. And Jonah knew also that the assignment was too hard. And so what did Jonah do? Jonah made a U-turn and flee, tried to flee from God. But Jonah, as we know in the story, he went down to Joppa. He called himself a boat ride, went to Tarshish. And it's interesting to find, now watch this. Tarshish was 2,500 miles away from where Jonah was supposed to go. And Nineveh was only 500 miles. Isn't it amazing the distance we go to run from God? We will go a great distance to run from the presence of God when God gives us a hard task sometimes. Many times this task that we're given, this assignment that we're given by God, it's closer to us than the disobedience it is to run away from it. 2,500 miles away and where God told him to go was only 500 miles away. It's interesting that God many times gives us an assignment that's close to us versus far away. God has given each of us an assignment, and I, I would say to you tonight that the proximity of that assignment is closer than what you think. And sometimes it's, it becomes such a task that it becomes hard to us and it becomes difficult to us. And so the best thing to do is let's just get away from it because really if we think we can get away from it, then it'll go away. The assignment's still there. And the commandment of God for us to complete that assignment is still there. Amen? Amen. Nineveh was a wicked city that needed God's presence, that needed the message of repentance, they needed the gospel preached to them. They needed God preached to them. But Jonah, Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh because he did not like the inhabitants of Nineveh. They were considered at that time the enemy of Israel. And at one time as they fought in the Assyrian army who was so cruel to Israel and they killed many, many, many of its ancestors. So Jonah really in his natural thinking in his natural mind. He's like, I don't want to go down there to Nineveh. They teamed up with the Assyrians and fought against Israel and killed some of our ancestors. You want me to go down there and preach to them? I don't think so. I'll run 2,500 miles away, right? Sometimes God will send you to the very ones that's hurt you the most. That may be your assignment. Every one of us We'll have a Nineveh at some point in our life. You got to face the Nineveh. You got to go through the Nineveh. You got to be obedient to the assignment that God gives you in the Nineveh moments of your life. Jonah's assignment was indeed a hard assignment, but yet it was an assignment from God Himself. Nineveh needed Jonah as much as Jonah needed Nineveh. Let me say that again. Nineveh needed Jonah as much as Jonah needed Nineveh. Jonah needed this Nineveh at this moment in his life. He needed a Nineveh. He needed a hard assignment. He needed something that was difficult in his life. We all need Ninevehs at times because if we don't have the Ninevehs in our life, we will routinely go through this thing and sooner or later, we will think that we can do it without the presence and the power of Almighty God. You see, sometimes in our lives, God will put what seems to be an insurmountable situation, an impossible task, a hard thing to overcome, and an assignment in our lives because God knows that we need it. God knows that we need it. God was not picking on Jonah. He knew that Jonah needed this at this time in his life. Nineveh needed Jonah, and Jonah needed Nineveh. Many times, we want to blame the devil on hard things. I do it every single day. Well, it's the devil, 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 it's the devil. It's the, devil. the devil's after me, the devil's after me, the devil's after me, the devil's after me. <laughs> 
It's the enemy. It's the devil. It's the devil. Sometimes it's God. Sometimes it's God trying to catch you through the hard things. Many times we want to blame the devil on hard things that come in our lives. We want to blame the enemy for difficult tasks that have come in our lives. But I submit to you tonight, God knows that we need a Nineveh in our lives. He knows that he needs to ask us to do some hard things sometimes. Especially in leadership, there are times that you have to make hard decisions. And sometimes it doesn't seem like it's the right decision or it seems like it's the best decision for an individual, but is the best decision for the entirety of the people. Amen? It's hard decisions sometimes. And that's why we need discernment. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we don't run from Nineveh, the Nineveh assignments in our life. Because if we're obedient in that, it will affect the entirety of those that God wants it to affect versus just one individual. The same way it is when we run, we affect more people than what we could ever imagine. Y'all with me tonight? Notice the first response that Jonah took as he was given his assignment by God. The Bible says that he rose up to flee from the presence of God. I'm just going to get out of here. When difficulty assails us, when hard tasks and difficult situations comes along, our first response, our natural response, is to run from it, get away from it, flee from it. But can I tell us, Scripture teaches us the presence of the Lord is going to be right in the middle of the hard tasks that God has given you. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And if he gives you a hard task to do, don't you think that God is going to go with you to do it? <laughs> Amen. The second thing we want to do when none of us come in our lives is throw in the towel many times. Jonah was willing to die. Jonah was willing, y'all just throw me overboard. Y'all just throw me out. Throw in the towel. And sometimes we, we just want to quit when the storm comes upon our ship. We just, we just, that's it, I'm done, I'm out of here. He said, throw me in the sea, it's best I just get out of here. This thing's getting really serious now. The natural instinct of our human flesh is one, run from the presence of God, and two, just throw in the towel and quit and say, I can't do it. You're right. We can't do it, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen? You say, Brother Bill, I'd never think that. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You can look back or possibly go through a Nineveh experience on that maybe you're going through right now that makes you want to just, you know what, I'm just going to throw in the towel on that. I'm just, that, that's it, I'm done. Moses wanted to quit. Elijah wanted to quit. Elisha wanted to quit. The apostle Peter, he did quit. He went back fishing. <laughs> he just quit, went back fishing. That's it, I'm out of here. I'm going to the brim bed. Shell cracker abetted over there on the Georgia side. That's where I'm going. Y'all find me over there. You want to go? And the thing is that some of the disciples went with him. <laughs> Amen. But I'll say it again. We need Nineveh, Nineveh moments, Nineveh assignments in our lives because it's in those Nineveh moments, those Nineveh assignments that we are called to endure, that's when we realize we must not run from the presence of God and we must embrace his presence in the midst of the Nineveh moments. In his presence, the Bible says, is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. How can you be in the pleasures of God, in the fullness of joy of God, when you're going through one of the most difficult assignments that you've ever had in your life it's because God is with you and if God is for me tell me who can be against us we not only need none of us in our lives to recognize his presence but we need them to recognize his power it would do us good to recognize the power of God in our everyday lives especially in the Nineveh moments Jonah chapter 1 verse 15 says so they took up Jonah Cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from a raging. 
That sea was not only beating the ship to pieces because it was in such turmoil, it was threatening the lives of not only Jonah, but it was threatening the lives of the rest of the sailors as well. It was a terrible storm. It was a horrendous event, and Jonah said, just throw me in, let me go so y'all can be saved. And what Jonah thought was going to be the end of him, God's power over the storms in our lives showed up. God already had a provision in the storm called a whale, called a fish, a great fish. He already had a provision even in the midst of Jonah's disobedience. God is so loving and so powerful that he already had a provision even in the midst of Jonah's disobedience. Thank God for the power of God on our lives. Amen. The power of God in the midst of the storm. The Nineveh moments in our lives are not only for the purpose of recognizing his presence, but embracing his power even more in those moments. He has the power to keep us through the storm. How many of you believe that? He has the power to keep us during the turmoil. <clears throat> God sometimes gives us hard assignments because he wants us to be re reminded of his presence and he wants to be us to re be reminded of his power. He wants us to be reminded that we are totally, totally dependent upon him. Early day church were in the biggest storms of their life many times when they would go out and do God's assignment. Jesus had been killed. The whole world was against them. And they were given a Nineveh assignment by going into all the world that hated them to preach the gospel. Jesus gave them the hardest task that there ever was. Before he left this earth, he gave his disciples a Nineveh moment as well. He said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Make disciples. He sent them into a world that hated them, that wanted to kill them. But he did not send them alone. He said, but you shall receive power after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Friend, if there's anything that we need in this day and hour, we've got an assignment that is difficult, that is tough in the world that we're living in. But the assignment that God has given us is to go into all the world and preach the gospel has not changed. Make disciples has not changed. That is a task that God has commanded us to do, but he has not commanded us to do it alone. He said, I will endue you with power after that, that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. Any church that believes they can operate without the presence and power of the Holy Ghost is not the New Testament church. I'm not talking about the gifts of the Spirit here. I'm talking about the presence of the Holy Ghost living within us to give us power to go into the hard moments, the hard assignments, the Ninevehs, the people we disagree with, the people we don't like, the people that are different than us. They have a soul. They need Jesus. Eternity is real, and we have been given an assignment, and we can be empowered by the Holy Ghost to make it happen. Amen? Amen? we got to accept the assignment from God. Where was I? Yes. And they stepped out of that upper room filled with the power to finish the Nineveh assignment. My prayer over the last few weeks in my private prayer time is God, fill your people with the Holy Spirit. Fill this church, fill this people with the Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh with the Holy Ghost. Let every believer be baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and then go talk to somebody in English or whatever language that they may need it to be translated into and tell them about Jesus. Give us the hard assignment, but give us the Holy Ghost, God. Give us the Nineveh moment again in our life and let us see the necessity that we must have the power of the Holy Spirit. I am asking, I am pleading with God for 
this church to have a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit and believers be baptized afresh in the Holy Ghost. That is my prayer. God, fill us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We cannot go through the motions and complete the Nineveh assignments in our lives. We must be filled with the power of God. Amen. And lastly, we need Nineveh moments in our lives, not only to recognize His presence, not only to embrace His power, but to praise Him for His provisions during those moments. God says He will supply all of our needs according to His riches which are in Christ Jesus. That's what he says. He said, I will give you all of the provisions that you need. Isn't it amazing that when they got in trouble, they began to throw their provisions off the boat? Friend, you never, never know the provisions that God is going to give you in the Nineveh moments. He may provide a knock on the door and say, hey, the Lord just led me here to tell you uh, hey, you may be going through a difficult time, but God just wants you to know that he loves you and that you, he's going to see you through. That's a provision of God. We always think maybe a check in the mail is a provision, and it is, or maybe a meal, and it is, or maybe more of this and more of that. It could be an obedient child of God that simply sees you, and the Holy Spirit moves on them and says, hey, I see or I feel like you're going through a difficult time. Let me help be a provision of the power of God in your life and lift you up and tell you you're going to make it, and you can complete the assignment that God has given you. Amen? I found myself the other day, I was writing a list of the things that I need to do. I, I, I have to write lists now unless I forget. <laughs> Any witnesses in the house? The problem is I forget where I put my list. <laughs> I was writing a list of things that I needed to get done and do this and do this and do this and do this and I need to do this and I need to do this and I categorize them and I, and I try to keep them in those categories so that I can help remember it a little bit better and all I had on there was needs. That's all I had on there was needs. I need this, 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 I need this. I'd like to have this, God, and I'd like to have this. That's all, that's all I had on there. Not at one point did I stop and say, God, is there something that you need from me? Is there something you want me to do? I had all of these things written out that I needed and that I thought needed to be done, but nowhere in that list making did I stop and say, God, what is it that you need from me to do for your kingdom today? Now, all of this was good stuff. All of it was actually church stuff. But sometimes we can get so busy that we forget to ask the God of provision, God, what do you need me to do today? Do I need to separate myself from this list today and be obedient to what you want me to do? Do I need to go here instead of going to all of this list stuff? Is God speaking to you on a, on a regular basis about assignments that he gives you? Or are we just speaking to God about the things that we need him to do for us? God will provide all of your needs. How many of you believe that? There's nothing God won't provide for you. It may not be a ribeye steak, but I can tell you this, cheap hamburger meat's good with gravy and onions. Amen? Well, there ain't nothing cheap now, but hallelujah. Y'all with me tonight? We need to understand that we can praise God for his provisions in the men of a moment. Jonah 1.17 says, Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. God provided that fish. God provided that fish. Remember the distance that Jonah traveled? 2,500 miles he was going. I wonder how many fish between where he left and where he was going there was. A bunch. A lots of fishes. 
over the limit of fishes. And God chose one out of all of those fish to be the provision to get Jonah back to a place where he was called to be. You may be the provision that God uses. Of all the people, you may be the one. The reason he had this fish prepared as a provision for Jonah is found in chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction. He said, I'm afflicted because I didn't obey you, Lord. And he heard me. He heard me in that, in that fish's belly. He heard me out of the belly of hell I cried, the scripture says, and thou heard my voice. I just want to tell you, there was another one that was in the belly of the earth. It wasn't because of disobedience. It was because of obedience, and that was Jesus who finished the assignment. Bled on, a, on an old rugged cross and went into the bellies of the earth, went into a grave, and God raised him from the dead. Amen? Jesus came forth with power over death, hell, and the grave. Jonah came forth with power over his Nineveh assignment. And went and declared the word of the Lord and some 120,000 inhabitants came to the Lord. 120,000 people. Inhabitants of Nineveh prayed and fasted and God's judgment was held and grace was given because Jonah said, take me back to the assignment. In the middle of that fish's belly, he cried out to God and said, God, get me out of here. And if you'll get me out of here, I'll go back to the assignment that you gave me. We need Nineveh moments in our lives so God's presence, God's power, and God's provisions can be manifested in our lives. Amen? Don't run from the hard assignment. Embrace the presence and the power and the provision of God. It's not always easy. But if it's a God assignment, I assure you, God will see you through it. Amen? There's a lot I don't know. But there is one thing I do know. My God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that I may ask or that I may think. And if God gives me an assignment, I'm going to do my best to complete that assignment because he's going to be with me. You're going through an assignment tonight. You're going through something that's hard. It may be God assigned. It may be something that God is wanting to show you again, his presence, his power, and his provisions. If you're going through something very difficult tonight, here's what I want us to do. This is how we're going to end it. If you're going through something very difficult, I want you to just stand right where you are tonight. Just stand. You're going through a very difficult situation. Stand. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed the sermon. We'd love to see you in person. We're at 2062 River Road in Sneeds, Florida, 32460. On Sundays, our Sunday school begins at 9 a.m. and our Sunday morning service begins at 10 a.m. Hope to see you soon.